women are starting to actually realize the insanity that they've been purporting on society and onto themselves, I think in the name of, well, in the name of virtue and compassion, but truly in the image of spite and resentment. Some women are waking up. I talked about this briefly in yesterday's video, which is getting censored, of course, by the way. It's very interesting to see the heroes of our times literally struggling against tyranny, the forces of darkness, people that quite literally want um, truth to be destroyed so that no longer judges them and for humanity to die. But I suppose men have always done battle with evil. In that video that's getting censored, I talked about how men are realizing the quality of women in the United States is, that is available to them. And I talked about that as we see the divide between men choosing to turn towards reality, become more impressive, lean into their masculinity, lean into their ambition, create value, prefer logic and reason, become more conservative, resist feminism, resist the resentment of the left, and women just saying reality doesn't exist, masculinity and objective frameworks are toxic and oppressive. It's creating um, an environment where the solution is going to be difficult because the solution is going to be humiliating because there's only one group of people that is causing the problem. And that's typically grounds for an irreconcilable difference. If you think of it in terms of relationship, that could result in divorce. But what I'm saying is I don't see a returning function because men can't say we've done something wrong. We are actually, if we look at the trend lines, we are becoming greater and greater in terms of our relationship with the truth by the month, by the week at this point pretty much, with what X is allowing men to see in terms of the war on truth and the war on reality waged by resentful destroyed women and other leftists. And so what this does is, is it as men are standing, some men are standing closer and closer with truth and reality than maybe men have ever, ever stood before. And we have a female population saying that facts are oppression, all opinions are valid, that masculinity is is toxic and oppression and objective frameworks and capitalism are, are all important. This is what we see being demonstrated, by the way, I just wanted to say quickly before I show you this video, in terms of the voting pattern, women are so resentful today in 2024 of objective frameworks of objectivity that they would sooner vote for a man with dementia than vote for an alpha male billionaire who is objectively correct and would serve the country extremely well. The thing is that people get mad about with him is like, they don't like him personally. I don't like the way he speaks, all this other shit. Fuck your feelings. Who's best for the country? I That's th that statement that you hear or that, that mentally depraved statement of I don't like the way he talks or I don't like him or I don't like what a masculine billionaire stands for is only spoken by degenerate destroyed women who hate reality, who have been basically cut off from experiencing a normal existence without anxiety, without a destroyed mind because they've demonized masculinity and so they no longer have that tether to reality. This is manifesting itself most brutally for women in not being able to fulfill their lives, which is having family and having kids. And so as a result, we know from psychological data that the most miserable women on the planet are women without kids, without a family. And this, this, this delusion, as they're doing the opposite of the truth and as men are winning is propelling them into a pit where they're miserable. They're literally as wrong as a person can get. They are resenting truth. They are resenting reality and they have no way of coming back because to come back would be to admit that they are literally wrong about everything on every level. This is the reason why I say the uh, differences are irreconcilable, but some women are waking up. This woman, I think uh, does a good job of describing it. She says, it's no surprise men are walking away from American women, referring to the passport bros or men that said, like I said in the last video, this is the quality of women the United States has to offer. The men I know who are either dating or married met their wives outside of the United States. These men are financially successful, tall, attractive, and very fit. They could easily marry a woman from the West, but they've all, but they've all told me that the attitude of American women is a major turnoff. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's correct. If women don't get it together soon, there will be a lot of lonely women. There already are a lot of lonely women, but the, an aspect of the left-wing ideology is actually that you must be a victim in order to be a good person. So as they're spiraling down into this endless pit of despair and depravity and loneliness and resentment and anxiety and throwing away their life, they can at least say, I'm a victim, so according to the left, I'm a good person. This is, I'm, I'm predicting this here. We are going to see, and I've predicted in many other videos, we're going to see women in 30, 40 years that are in my generation blaming men for all the wrong choices that they made their entire lives.
There are women right now that are going out of the way to make every decision they make to be the opposite of truth. There are women right now going out of their way to make every decision that they make to spite reality, to spite truth, because to adhere to truth, to adhere to objectivism is to please the patriarchy. So there are women sacrificing their lives on the altar of their own resentment. Men know the majority of women aren't worth the trouble because they have become the haystack, not the needle in the haystack. Good men know they are the unicorns and aren't buying into entitled women. This is an unspoken reality that I've never really said out loud, but a lot of men do recognize this, especially us unvaxxed, base, high IQ um, people with disagreeable personalities that are willing to just resist the slave mind, resist the matrix, say that the left is openly fraudulent and immoral and evil, that you know they want to depopulate humanity, etc. We know that we're the ones that are the highest value men objectively. So we're not gonna spend years or months of our lives rescuing an OnlyFans bimbo or radical feminist that is, you know, 45 years old that, that thinks, oh my gosh, I was oppressed. That's the reason I'm in the position that I'm in. No, we're just gonna let reality brutally educate them via consequences, AKA being miserable, having no family, having no kids. Man, these women actually have no idea how miserable, how miserable they're going to become, seriously. Because they think reality is a game. I talked about this yesterday. They think reality is a joke. They think it's a suggestion. They, they don't understand that the world they're living in actually doesn't cater to the way their brain works. It has nothing to do with feelings. Men understand this intrinsically because we have to engage in reality to build civilization. Everywhere you go, there's a hot girl. But a guy who is established, has great character, great body, tall, you know, successful. Those are the unicorns. Women don't come off their high horse real soon. It's so hilarious because Myron literally spoke about this yesterday. The women couldn't handle it, walked off the podcast, started getting ratchet, started insisting that slavery was uh, in the United States or something. You know, their brains just completely melt. But the reality is, is that supply and demand dictates that the men have the leverage. So it's extremely brutal. Not only do we have women deliberately doing the opposite of reality, saying the opposite of the truth, destroying themselves despite reality, making themselves more miserable, embodying utter <laughs> failure. And by the way, proving why women always needed men throughout the, throughout the course of human history. But through their doing this, it gives men all the leverage to exercise judgment against them. It's, it's beyond brutal and feminist. Women have no idea the world that they're headed into as a result of their choices. The number of women in my generation that in 20 years are going to be single and childless, unable to have children, unable to attract a man that they are attracted to, and then they're going to blame men, but they've made all the wrong choices repeatedly as men told them and screamed at them, you're making the wrong decision. This is why, this is why in my opinion, the relationship between men and women at this point is likely unrecoverable because one side is doing 100% of things correctly and the other side is doing 100% of things incorrectly. There's not a sharing of responsibility. There's not going to be collaboration in the coming to terms with reality. And that's going to be, well, that is already embedded in the feminist psyche as the most intolerable, infuriating thing that could ever happen. And this is the reason why we see women who would sooner raise a child by themselves or abort a baby or try to raise a kid without a father, even though they know that the statistics show that that would create the highest likelihood of a terrible life, you know, ending up in jail, being a criminal, underperforming in almost every way, they would rather still do that then adhere to reality because adhering to reality is oppression. This is the way feminists operate. This person says men want two things for women, physical attractiveness and a pleasant attitude. Pleasant attitude, uh, I understand, can be broken down into many uh, subcategories, but I think actually it wouldn't even matter what men's preferences are. Women would, like for instance, if, men pre if men's preferences were the opposite of this, for instance, women would embody the opposite of what men want just to spite them, just to spite reality. I genuinely believe this because feminism is so toxic and it trades so thoroughly on the fuel of resentment. It's what powers their ideology that they would cut off their own nose to spite their face because that, that is what we're seeing them doing right now. Oh, I'm going to sterilize myself and remain single and childless past the age of 35. I mean, it's actually tragic and a humanitarian crisis when you look at the numbers of young women who are ruining and throwing away their lives because they, they've been told by their resentful divorced mother that the patriarchy is oppressing them and masculine ambition is toxic. But again, there's the element of the PSYOP, which is especially 
brutal, which is that this is just making men into better people and women into worse people. Because the adaptation men are finding for this is to become better versions of themselves, richer, more important, more mentally disciplined, more capable in all domains, more aware of what's going on. And the woman's reaction is to reject and demonize reality as oppressive, toxic, patriarchal, and discriminatory. Guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel.